Okay. Okay, we're ready to call the roll to go into open session. Ms. Bose? Here. Ms. Evans? Here. Mrs. Grover? Here. Mr. Johnson? Here. Dr. King? Mr. Pluta? Ms. Santos? Here. Mr. Van Hise? Ms. Farmer? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, announcement of notice of open public meeting. The New Jersey open public meeting law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to advance notice of and to attend meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. As required under law, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided via email and or fax to the Times, the Lawrence Ledger, the Public Library, and has been filed with the Municipal Clerk. This notice was provided prior to 48 hours required by the Open Public Meetings Act. The board reserves the right to limit public discussion of personnel items and other matters as defined in the law. And with that, we will have now the flag salute. Okay. Thank you. Next, we will move to student representative report. We love it when you're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello, everyone. My name is Courtney Copeland. Um, I'm a member of peer leadership, and recently we've had a lot going on here at LHS. Uh, today we had a fundraiser for students helping Honduras at Captain Paul's, and that went successfully. I bought ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> We're also in our second week for fall sports, and our teams are doing very well. We had a lacrosse game today, despite the rain. And I'm also a member of National Honor Society, and we've been really productive lately with our weekly cardinal nest sessions in the library during the resource periods, where we help mentor freshmen, seniors, or freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, sorry. And we've also ended our flower fundraiser, where we raised around $500 for Homefront. And we're re reviewing um, recent applications for our future members. Hello, I'm Ayla Shumfries. I'm a junior. So the juniors took part in the new state NJGPA test a few weeks ago. It was a little bit of a long week, but we're all glad it's over. And everyone in the school is excited for spring break next week. That will be very fun. Um, Operation Smile just had a merchandising fundraiser where they raised about, around $500. And we also have an upcoming spring choral concert on May 12th. Hi, I'm Medina Rashindran, and I'm also a member of peer leadership. Um, one thing I want to report on is Deloitte Academy. It's a three-year program that runs through our sophomore and senior year with Ms. Huber and Ms. Schneck, and we meet with Deloitte mentors and talk about interpersonal skills and networking. Um, unfortunately, our last visits last year were all virtual, but this year we got the employees to come to the library, and the program did get renewed for another three years. Also with Ms. Huber, she started a baking club and any donations would be appreciated. Lastly, senior award applications are due April 8th at 7 p.m. There's over 15 scholarships to apply for. You can write a little blurb and then submit the Google form to apply to them. Hi, my name is Ratika. I'm a senior as well. Um, along with peer leadership, I'm involved in Operation Smile and the Business Academy. I wanted to share a bit about DECA. So in March, we attended the state conference in Atlantic City, which was very successful. And as a result of that, 16 people um, advanced to the International Career Development Conference, also known as ICDC. And this year, it will be held in Atlanta, Georgia. So we will be attending from April 22nd to the 27th. And during that time, students will have the opportunity to compete in various events from marketing to entrepreneurship, 
um, to accounting, and we're very grateful for the uh, endless support that Mr. Tease and Ms. Schneck, our advisors, provide us throughout the year. Thank you. Hi, my name is Haley Santello, and I'm a senior, and I'm a part of peer leadership and Op Smile. Um, we had a great turnout for the theater company for their play Once Upon a Mattress, which ran last Thursday to Saturday. And then after spring break, it's a final stretch for seniors with prom June 2nd, the senior showcase May 6th, and graduation June 21st. Spring conferences are tonight for the high school, and the other schools have conferences the rest of the week and have half days. AP testing is also coming up in the first two weeks of May, and it's mostly juniors and seniors. Thank you for your time and have a great spring break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for that great uh, presentation. Keep up the good work. And now we'll move on recognition and acknowledgement. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Um, our very own middle school principal, Dr. Mindy Malaski, received the 2022 Practicing Leader Award for the state of New Jersey for her leadership and her efforts to create an excellent learning environment at LMS. So I wanted to give her a huge oh, shout out. Oh, yeah. And um, the month of April is School Library Month, so we are fortunate tonight to have our librarians, and I want to offer my thanks and appreciation for all they do every day. Um, but they want to have a quick opportunity to share about their excellent work with our kids in our libraries, so I will have them come forth. Good evening. I think Jason Reynolds is going to speak first. I'm Jason Reynolds. And admittedly, when I was a kid, I didn't spend much time in the school library. But that's only because I had no idea that school libraries are as amazing as they are. 20 years later, now what I can see uh, and begrudgingly admit to myself is that school libraries for many, many students are places of refuge. The school library serves as a safe bastion for kids who just want to feel less alone. There are also places of recognition where young people can come in and see each other, create networks amongst one another, and see their faces and their stories and their names on all the books, on the shelves, and all the other creative components that libraries now offer, including technology. Also, their places of research. Obviously, everybody knows you go to the school library to find out information. That information usually comes through a specific conduit, a special resource, and that resource is the school library. Now, that librarian has one job. Her job is to basically serve as a buttress, as, as, as an affirmation and a confirmation for every single student that walks through those doors. Now, that sounds like a special place, uh, and it is a special place that make it sound. Now, if you want to join me in celebrating the school libraries around this country, please check out the American Association of School Librarians at AASL.org. Thank you. I, I love him. I felt like he was talking to me. Um, I would like to read this resolution, which was accepted this morning by the New Jersey State Board of Education. It is a resolution for School Library Month. Whereas the month of April 2022 has been designated nationally as School Library Month by the American Association of School Librarians, and whereas the New Jersey State Board of Education recognizes the unique contributions of school libraries in providing materials that reflect equity, diversity, and inclusion to meet individual needs, varied interests, abilities, socioeconomic backgrounds, and maturity levels of the students they serve. And, whereas, school libraries provide open access to both print and digital collections that educate students on the ideas and beliefs of religious, social, political, historical, and ethnic groups, and their contributions to the American and world heritage and culture. And, whereas, school libraries serve as a point of voluntary access to information and ideas 
and as a learning laboratory for students as they acquire critical thinking and problem-solving skills that will be needed for their future in a pluralistic society. And whereas school libraries provide resources as well as a physical space that nurture the social and emotional needs of students, making them feel safe and included. And whereas school library media specialists provide opportunities for students to develop an appreciation of literature and recreational reading, honoring students' right to read. And whereas, school library media specialists collaborate with teachers to integrate instructional activities designed to equip students to bridge the digital divide, learning to utilize the power of the internet to locate, evaluate, and use a broad range of ideas effectively. And whereas school library media specialists provide instruction in information literacy, helping students to discern between misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation, preparing them to participate in a democratic society. And whereas school libraries and certified school library media specialists are instrumental in helping school districts to not only meet New Jersey student learning standards, but also in fully preparing New Jersey students for post-secondary success. And whereas, it is both fitting and proper that special recognition be given to school libraries and the role of certified school library media specialists in ensuring that all students in New Jersey have equitable access to high quality education and are able to achieve academic success. Now, therefore, be it resolved, that the New Jersey State Board of Education and the Commissioner of Education recognize April 2022 as School Library Month in New Jersey. Yay! <laughs> now from Wendy. <laughs> Behind you. We're waiting for you. But unfortunately, uh, that just wasn't possible. I'm glad that technology has made this possible. The Ben Franklin Media Center is a bustling place where students and staff can discover resources and opportunities to grow as readers, learners, innovators, and creators. In addition to the many impromptu visits people make throughout the week, students come as a class to the library each and every week where they learn how to become self-sufficient library users in order that they can access information and literature for their own personal, recreational, and intellectual pursuits. And of course, students look forward to spending time during each and every class selecting books to borrow. Mm. The Library Media Center showcases all the ways that learning extends well beyond the classroom. We're very excited to have such a vibrant, and um, well-used library program. Thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. Happy reading. <laughs> <laughs> so Good evening, I'm Michelle Amordino. I'm the School Library Media Specialist at Eldridge Park. The Eldridge Park Library Media Center is an inclusive, visible, and inviting center of the school. The program empowers students to explore personal and intellectual interests through unlimited access to resources and connections to the world. At EPS, students visit the library once a week. The highlight of each visit is the student's time to choose a book to borrow for the week. Students come excited and ready to explore new places and people through literature and informational books in the library. In addition to book exchange, students engage with the librarian, that's me, in <laughs> lessons that focus on finding and using information in many different ways using read-alouds, databases, and personal exploration. Thank you. Hi, I'm Stacy Moore. I'm the library media specialist at Slackwood. Um, the Slackwood Library ensures that our students become lifelong readers and producers of ideas. The library provides a warm, welcoming, and inclusive space where students can learn, explore, grow, and connect with the world. 
Each class comes to the library once a week for book exchange, and like in the other schools, it's the highlight of the library visits, um, and an engaging lesson using read-alouds, exploration through research, and interactive collaborative activities. Since moving to its new home, the Slackwood Library also has a stream center where students come for enriching activities and hands-on learning. Thank you. Thank you. So I failed to introduce myself before. I'm Gabrielle Caseri. I'm the LIS librarian. And whereas the LIS Media Center empowers students and staff to explore personal and intellectual interests in a safe, inclusive space through unlimited access to resources and connections to the world. Students come for book exchange every other week and can check out up to four books at a time. I work with teachers and students on research projects and I make sure they know how to use and access our databases. And the Dewey Decimators, my pride and joy, I have 90 student <laughs> volunteers who help keep the library in order and the LAS Library Media Center is at the heart of the LAS. Well done. Hi, I'm uh, Eileen Kramer. I'm the librarian at the middle school. And I want to share a secret with you. Um, middle school students are amazing. Yes, are. By matching a library program with the various needs of our students, we have the joy of seeing our students learn research skills, navigate their personal interests, create and explore our makerspace stations, and develop valuable skills that will support them one day in college. What does it look like? We'll stop by the LMS library and you'll see students looking for books, reading, exploring makerspaces, completing jigsaw puzzles, meeting with a teacher, eating lunch, and even visiting with a therapy dog. The library is no longer the quiet place it once was, and now instead we have a modern learning environment that encourages community and learning. Thank yes. you. Good evening, my name is Eva Jedic Elliott. I'm your librarian here at the high school. Um, but besides being your high school librarian, I'm also president-elect of New Jersey Association for School Librarians. And I wanted to thank the board for such a wonderful support that you provide for our school library program here at State of New Jersey. Um, being with the association, I have the bird's eye view of the state of librarianship in, in our wonderful state of New Jersey. And I can tell you that it's very rare that we have actually this wonderful opportunity that every single building in our school has a certified librarian. So thank you so much for your ongoing support. <coughs> and also, um, December um, 2021, um, I was the chair of the conference and our district was so well represented. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Eldridge participated, our wonderful uh, supervisor, Ms. Hayes, um, Dr. Pankost, so you guys sent a wonderful representation to the conference, so thank you so much. And here I wanna tell you just a couple of sentences about what we do at the high school library. The school library program at the Lawrence High School, just like other libraries in the district, provides access to academic and non-academic resources for all students. Besides supporting classroom teachers with digital and print materials for research projects, we also assist with college and career readiness. Our close collaborations with local colleges and universities give us a better understanding of how a successful high school library program can best prepare students for their next post high school adventure. Our libraries are places where students are able to learn and grow, but also find a quiet place to rest and reset during a busy and sometimes noisy school day. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to add how much I appreciate that you all have made all of the library spaces so welcoming to our students. It doesn't go unnoticed when we walk into the libraries. You just feel at home and welcome. So, and that's a an tribute to you all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you again to all of the librarians <clears throat> for your presentation. Um, next, we'll move to the board secretary's report. Uh, yes, the. Um, I, I actually have I'm sorry. Yeah, we have the minutes, and then I think you're before me. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. Get it. Uh, adoption of the minutes. If we could have a motion. So moved. Second. Who seconded that, please? Michelle. 
Absolutely. Thank you. <coughs> May I call the roll? Yes, please call the roll. Ms. Bose? Yes. Ms. Evans? Yes. Ms. Grover? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Santos? Yes. Ms. Farmer? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And now we'll move to superintendent's report. As our high school students shared, it is truly a wonderful time in our schools. Spring sports are in full swing, and it's time for our student plays, our school musicals, concerts, and ample time for celebration of student work and student learning, which really carries us to the end of the year. We are very hopeful and optimistic that we will be able to have graduations, moving up ceremonies, and other year-end activities, much like we did before the pandemic hit. So I'm excited about that. And I also want to take this opportunity to truly thank our students, our staff, our families for their efforts, their resilience, and their support for the district and each other. I really hope that we find ways to celebrate and show gratitude for our students and staff for what we've been able to accomplish coming out of this traumatic pandemic. As I've shared at every board meeting, we are continuing to work on our strategic plan and goals. We continue to meet with our leadership team and consultants to review the data from staff and parents and students to grow our plan. We are right now in the stage where we're forming our goals based on all the information we have gathered. And we're working with folks, parents, staff, community in small groups to get feedback towards those goals. In the last week, we met with a group from the ECV, and just the other night had a group meeting with Black Lives in Lawrence. There will be many more meetings after spring break. As part of the strategic plan back in September, we applied and we were accepted to be part of the New Jersey School Climate Transformation Project out of Rutgers. The program allows us to participate and pilot things regarding school climate, and they are providing us with a tool and a platform at no cost to the district. We have Clifton Thompson and Adrian Wasser leaping, leading this effort for our district. And here they are tonight to share some of the details as the surveys are finally being released and we'll be able to get some data for our district in the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Presenting with me tonight is Ms. Wasserleben. Hi. So for those of you who I haven't officially had a chance to meet yet, I teach health and PE here at the high school. I've been here for 11 years. And with that, I'm also a very proud alumni. So Mr. Thompson and I are excited to share some information with you regarding the New Jersey Transformation Project, which was designed, again, as a partnership with Rutgers University and the New Jersey Department of Education to support schools in data-driven school climate improvement, but most importantly, how that looks at LTPS. Research on school climate suggests that meaningful school change takes time and sustained efforts over a period of several years. The School's Climate Transformation Project at Rutgers University uses the problem-solving process referred to as the School Climate Change Process. School leaders work together as a district climate team consisting of key district staff and school principals as an essential layer of support in this process to help align strategic efforts of school goals and priorities while engaging various stakeholders. District teams meet quarterly throughout the year to provide opportunities for cross-district sharing as well as support through individualized consultation and coaching. During these meetings, Members of the DCLT work together to understand common strengths and needs across schools and support the development and implementation of individualized school plans. All DCLT members have access to the NJCS SCI platform, which serves as the district site for collaborating and coordinating school climate efforts. This platform offers opportunities for cross-sharing, using shared resources, <laughs> collaborative note-taking, and team planners. The NJSCI calendar and DCLT workplace allows users to schedule meetings and plan activities. SCI writing is another tool for helping 
DCLT's log, t- log mm-hmm. time-stamped notes from meeting and or activities, and upload downloadable resources. As previously mentioned, DCLT guides and coordinates district-wide school climate efforts by supporting the development of a diverse and representative school leadership team in each school. Team members may bring knowledge of school climate and culture, systems level change, and subject matter expertise in specific programs or interventions, such as social emotional learning and trauma-informed practices. SELTs meet regularly throughout the school year to carry out a range of tasks and activities associated with the school climate change process, which includes monitoring progress and making necessary adjustments to plans. District and school level leaders attend to, attend to equity by engaging community stakeholders through accessible data collection methods, varied communication and feedback channels, opportunities for collaborative decision making, and culturally responsive planning design, and implementation of research-based practices. Each SCLT will have access to their NJSky platform school site, which offers a variety of planning tools and resources, including workspaces where teams can collaborate on team development, data collection, and analysis, along with strategic planning. As district climate coordinators, our primary responsibility is to prepare New Jersey's School Climate Improvement Survey Administration, as well as training staff members who support this work. This spring, all LTPS staff, students in grades three through 12, and families are invited to pilot in the NJ Sky Survey that was developed by Rutgers University to help schools identify areas of school, uh, school climate strengths and needs. Participation in this survey will take place on a password protected online platform and is completely anonymous and voluntary. Respondents may also skip any and all questions. Two weeks prior to survey administration, a letter with survey dates, access to sample questions, and detailed instructions will be sent to families. Data collected from the survey will be utilized through a collaborative problem-solving approach to help achieve desired outcomes to drive effective and lasting change. So we know we just threw a ton of information at you. So with that being said, if you should have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to either one of us. Uh, We really appreciate your time tonight, and thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. So being part of this pilot is really a great win for our district. It gives us a free tool and Mm -hmm. resources and support to collect data and measure our school climate, which will be a benchmark in our strategic plan and give us a place to start and a place to grow to and a place to aim for. So we're really excited to be part of this and I really thank uh, Clifton and Adrian for taking the ball and running with it and being part of this process and and helping us guide through it. So thank you. Um, And then I just have one last quick thing and it's really uh, a reminder uh, which went out today and I'm sure that the, the students are extremely happy about, but <laughs> there will be no school. Schools are closed on Monday, April 18th. It was built into our calendar as a snow emergency day. We have not used our snow emergency days to this point, so it is a day off in the calendar. So please don't show up that day. We are <laughs> certainly going to put a reminder out and a phone dialer out on that Sunday night, but uh, there won't be here anybody on Monday to receive students, so please Uh, enjoy an extra day off after the the spring break. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kaysen. Now, board secretary's report. Thank you. uh, Before the board this evening is the acceptance of our audit. It's now called the Annual Comprehensive Financial Report. And the uh, audit is posted online. It's been there now for a couple of weeks. Uh, So you can find that at www.ltps.org. You can also find audits going back, I believe, to uh, 2001 there. Um, You'll also find our budgets there. Um, uh, There are no recommendations or uh, need for a corrective action plan for the the audit. Um, I'll just remind the board that the auditor works for the Board of Education and will certainly answer any questions that you have directly. Uh, Without going through the administration, you can contact the auditor directly. Um, and they're always happy to answer questions or come in and talk to you about whatever your concerns or interests are for that matter. 
Um, so that is on the agenda this evening. There is an audit synopsis that is on the, uh, at the door this, uh, tonight. Um, however, that's just a brief summary, uh, minus all of the statistical sections in the audit. Um, also, um, I just wanted to give the board an update on uh, resources in general. Um, the board is probably aware that there are many uh, large initiatives taking place right now. Our health benefits uh, initiative moving to the school health insurance fund, which is a joint insurance fund, uh, is underway. We'll be holding staff sessions on April 19th and the 20th. Um, this is a significant movement for the Board of Education. It's significant for a number of reasons. It means that we're uh, trying to keep resources in the classroom. And when we do that, we're trying to keep resources uh, uh, channeled towards our teaching staff and our support staff so that they can deliver services. And so we saw um, a restraint of growth in the cost of health benefits. Overall health benefits, the line itself in the budget is roughly 13,500, uh, excuse me, 13 million. $500,000 of that medical and prescription is probably 11,500,000. And so we're moving ahead with that. Another item in our budget is transportation, specifically what we contract out for, which is uh, approximately $4 million. I made the board aware that our existing contractor, uh, Dapper Bus, is not interested in renewing routes. I understand that that is something that is uh, quite common amongst the other school districts in their respective contractors also. As inflation is uh, soaring, we see gas prices, and so contractors are not eager to renew at their current rates. Um, the total allow uh, allowed renewal, uh, renewal was 1.92%, and I don't think contractors are interested in doing that in a 7% inflation uh, economy. And so we'll be going out for bids again for transportation um, for all of our routes for the most part. In addition to that, uh, we'll be going out to bid for food services, and uh, we'll be doing that um, within uh, two days of this meeting. We'll file the paperwork to the Division of Child Nutrition and the State of New Jersey, who will review our bid specifications and make comments, and then we will be out uh, once more uh, it's been many years, it's been about seven years now since we've been out uh, to bid, and so we'll be doing that. Then finally, on the agenda this evening is a custodial services contract for you. Um, that we see a $79,000 increase over the current school year, uh, which is roughly a 17% increase over the incumbent contractor. Um, we've had the incumbent contractor now for several years. Um, they're doing a good job. Uh, that contractor is not recommended for award. They were not the lowest responsible responsive bidder. Um, and we wish them well and thank them for their attention to us. Uh, since we've uh, begun our uh, outsourcing, only the night uh, custodial services and um, none of the day, and only half of the district is outsourced. Um, I just want to, again, manage the board's expectation, regardless of the contractor that we have uh, selected, we have always had um, a difficult time in the opening stages of that as we got uh, accustomed to the norms. Uh, that was, it didn't matter whether it was all clean, the existing contractor or Pritchard or Blue Stripes, um, there's a, a period of settling in. Um, and so immediately after this meeting, we will um, open the doors for the, uh, the recommended contractor to come in, have a complete and thorough contract review um, and try to do everything we can to uh, make sure that that transition is smooth. And so there are any other number of things that are on the agenda this evening from door replacement projects to uh, some transportation routes that may be of interest to you. Um, and finally, um, I do continue to go out to the areas um, where parents have expressed concern about walking distances and transportation and I'm taking uh, notes in terms of what I see there communicating with the parents. Uh, next week we will be off, but the following week we'll be um, uh, taking note and counting the number of students, specifically at the high school, middle school, on those routes to see if there's any way that we can reduce routes and then rechannel resources uh, to other areas in need. And this Board of Education um, has not stopped asking me to pursue uh, that interest that the constituents have. And so we've kept it on the agenda of every finance committee meeting since its, uh, 
its inception, that is the concerns inception. Um, and so we've reported back any number of, of initiatives. And for the board's understanding, uh, we've looked at things such as double tiering routes so that we would have uh, one route leave a school um, and then come right back to that school and run another route away from that school if we can do short runs. We've considered the ideas of why, uh, while a route for the high school may be in a neighborhood, can it pick up uh, students from the intermediate school and drop them off there um, who, who don't currently uh, qualify for transportation any longer? Or do we have uh, any routes going to other elementary schools that pass by neighborhoods that no longer receive transportation uh, to pick up those students also? And so um, we are, are grasping at ways to try and find services for people. Um, and so we'll have more information on that hopefully by, uh, if we have any spare capacity, it's been two years since we've done an inventory of ridership. Um, and so we know that our, our enrollment has decreased, specifically at the elementary level. We need to look at the high school level where the numbers don't show such a decrease at the middle school, high school at this mm -hmm. point, that mm -hmm. cohort uh, reduction of students has not moved up that high, um, but we'll be looking there to see what we can do. A number of people have asked whether or not the free and reduced lunch price uh, meals or meals themselves will be free again next year. We don't know the answer to those questions. Uh, as soon as we have that answer, we will get out uh, in front of it and let you know um, if that's going to happen. Um, there's, um, I don't want to pretend to be Johnny Carson and be Karnak and take a guess. Um, <laughs> so uh, also on the agenda this evening is the setting of lunch prices for next year. Um, the lunch prices are roughly, uh, I don't mean to steal your thunder, uh, Pepper, roughly... You uh, all of my thunder. Okay. <laughs> thunder left. Roughly 7% uh, in terms of the way of increases for next year. Um, that translates into about 20 cents um, across the board, uh, give or take, uh, a couple pennies here and there for rounding. And uh, with all that being said, um, uh, we are still rolling forward with the initiatives for security. Uh, as uh, part of the referendum, we have devices that will be deployed in all of the schools and uh, most of the offices, whereby we'll have visual readouts when we go into lockdowns or when we go into all clears. Um, those visual readouts include a clock system and PA system, and they're all powered over Ethernet, so we don't have to run additional um, uh, energy to them. That is being led up by uh, Stephen Prentice and Vince Heather and their crew. Uh, the materials are essentially here. Eldridge Park is our pilot school where our staff has installed some of these. Um, so the technology department has done an absolutely fascinating job. They've done a great job with that. We will soon be going out to bid for labor for the purposes of installing all the rest of the devices um, there are far too many for our staff to install. There are hundreds in the district. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, at some point you will be able to, on your tours, uh, Madam President, see how that goes into effect um, <laughs> for communications. Okay. And so all of that is still happening. Um, we have our paving bids. Uh, we are out to bid uh, next week. They'll be advertised for repaving of the schools and uh, Slackwood School's boiler replacement goes out to bid next week. And Jean, I see you in the audience. So we're working on completing the contracts with the contractor for the roof at Slackwood School. Uh, color selection is where we are, and we're still running down the road. Um, and um, those are just some of the things that are happening right now amongst um, normal business. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Eldridge. Okay. Um, next is uh, the board president's report. That's me. Um, I just you know, want to just make some brief remarks. Um, I had the opportunity to cover a lot of ground since our last meeting um, in visiting some additional schools. I was able to, last Thursday, I was at the middle school conducting um, mock interviews, kind of in my parent role. But first, more than anything, I'd like to thank the community and the business members slash partners and the parents that participated in the Lawrence Middle School mock interviews. Uh, and secondly, I have to say how impressed I was with our students. 
They were prepared, self-confident, self-aware, easy to talk to, and just genuinely awesome human beings, I thought. Um, one of the unscripted questions that I asked many of my interviews, there were about five students, was, who is your hero? And more often than not, the answer was their parents, their mom, their dad, or a sibling, an older sibling. Um, and I thought that spoke volumes, you know, to their families. And I have to say kudos to Dr. Milowski for what is going on at LMS. Um, those students were just, I was so impressed, I have to tell you. Um, I also had the opportunity to attend uh, Rachel's Challenge, which is a kindness program that helps with anti-bullying. Um, Rachel was a first student that was killed at Columbine, and her story of kindness and empathy prior to her passing was quite remarkable. Um, next, I was able to attend the opening night of the spring musical here at the high school last Friday for Once Upon a Mattress. All I can say is the professionalism and the talent coming out of our art program is outstanding. The students did a marvelous job at what I was marvelous job and what I was most impressed with did not go unnoticed was the inclusivity. Kudos to all the students, the stars that work so hard and put on a great show. Principal Dr. Adam, Vice Principal Mrs. Brenda E. Keats. I am a little bit jealous even of the choreographer. I have to give a shout out <laughs> to um, Ms. Catherine Cole from Ben Franklin, who worked with the high schoolers. I just have to say, what a valuable collaboration between schools. She was um, a pleasure to, to speak to it when I was in the audience. I also have to mention, as Ross said, that we are moving in the right, right along with our strategic plan and our community meetings. Um, I was able to attend two of the meetings and getting some of the feedback from parents and community members is just invaluable. Um, the board is looking forward to the data that we're collecting and we'll be able to report back out to the public. So thank you. And that concludes my um, report. Thank you. Next, we will move on to committee reports, and we will start with community relations and legislative affairs. Uh, thank you so much, Madam President. Um, certainly uh, enjoyed seeing you on March the 30th uh, at the First Baptist Church uh, of Acres, Acres Crossing, the community room. Um, meeting with the uh, Every Child Valued um, parents in the uh, Acres Crossing area. Um, I would first like to acknowledge the superintendent and the staff who came out, uh, gave a beautiful presentation. Uh, we had several engaging parents, and I was quite impressed with the superintendents uh, zeroing in on areas that we need to focus on in terms of academic performance. Um, uh, the testing data, things of that nature. And the one thing that uh, I think parents really uh, understood, Superintendent, was the disparity in terms of the academic performance between our white and uh, black students or students of color. Uh, we need to um, redouble our efforts to ensure that our kids uh, read uh, at a third grade level. Um, that they were on level by third grade. I think the superintendent made it clear that if students are reading on grade level by grade three, they tend to do well in school. Um, so we need to focus on how do we bring those students up to the level that are already in our schools, and how do we engage our parents to get them to uh, focus on helping their kids irrespective of where they live and, and their income level. Um, so um, at the March 30th meeting, I would like to just indicate that the board president, Mrs. Farmer, is president, uh, Mrs. Grover, and myself, and also our former board member, Joyce Scott, was present uh, in addition to other community members. And it was really, really nice um, to see everybody out, 
uh, not wearing masks, at least some of us, <laughs> getting back to normal. Um, very, very appreciative. Um, there are two other items that I would like to just bring the attention to uh, the community and the board. Um, obviously, the war in Ukraine is, is something that's going on, and it's very disturbing um, to see what's going on and how that is affecting uh, our community, and uh, I understand our families and so forth. So um, hopefully at the next board meeting, um, I would like to offer a resolution um, that would show our support for the uh, Ukrainian nation and uh, all of our uh, uh, members of the community who are from Ukraine, um, because obviously we know that it's affecting them, and uh, uh, it, it's very difficult to watch on TV. And, and uh, according to what our president is saying and, and others, it doesn't look like that war is going to end anytime soon, and the carnage just keeps um, continuing in terms of the number of deaths and so forth. So it's very concerning, and I think it's affecting our community. Um, the other matter that I would like to bring to the attention, my understanding is that there are two bills in the legislature right now that uh, our state senator, Shirley Turner, is either the sponsor or a co-sponsor of that. One of them is um, an issue that uh, uh, our nation has to deal with, and, and that is uh, the issue of reparations. Um, there is presently a bill that's on the governor's desk that would create a commission to study the effects of, um, uh, rep well, the study of the issue of slavery and, and uh, reparations. Um, it's just a commission that will be selected, and, and I do believe the governor is going to sign it. So I look forward to the meetings and the data and everything that comes out of that. And then the last um, piece of legislation I think is, is going to be important to us. My understanding is that S uh, Senator Turner is sponsoring a bill that would um, provide more funds to school districts to deal with the just the whole learning disparity uh, with remote learning and, and that our kids have lost um, uh, significant uh, instruction and, and uh, uh, will need uh, assistance. And I was talking with the, the senator or the assembly uh, member staff, and, and that bill, um, I understand, has a broad range of support. So uh, hopefully within the next month, um, we're going to know for sure um, um, what's coming out of that. Um, but my understanding is that there is a significant amount of surplus money that is still available uh, with respect to the state of New Jersey. And so there may be additional funds coming down okay. for that. And I certainly look forward to any type of additional summer learning, summer training that our kids could get to help with that, uh, the learning loss that uh, we've suffered over the course of the last two years due to the pandemic. Okay. Um, that's the uh, conclusion of my report. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Johnson. Um, next, negotiations um, has not met, so we will move to equity. Good evening again. Okay. <laughs> Part two. He's wearing the carpet out. <laughs> <laughs> So I have an opportunity to be the district hip coordinator with Ms. Philmeyer out. I recognize that we might need to just remind parents in the community of the difference between hib and conflict because we all have conflict and it doesn't necessarily mean that it meets the requirements that the law sets for harassment, intimidation, and bullying uh, legally. And so I just wanted to go over that really quick. The anti-bullying bill of rights hib is the commonly referred to as HIV, which is the law. And the purpose of the law is to strengthen the standards by which school districts prevent, report, investigate, and respond to incidents of bullying. And that's usually the conflict. And there were districts that weren't responding to 
conflicts between children and they had disastrous effects. And so the law creates a situation where you have to respond to those things before you can say there isn't HIV the law. And then you still should do something about the conflicts. So the anti-bullying rights definition of HIV is that it has to be motivated, and I'm going to read the bold print, motivated, the issues have to be motivated by race, color, religion, ancestry, national origin, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression, or a mental, physical, sensory disability, or by another distinguishing characteristic. It must substantially disrupt or interfere with the orderly operation of the school or rights of the students to learn. It must interfere with the student's education or by severely or pervasively causing physical or emotional harm to the student. So if a student is being in a situation where they are being bothered to the point that is taking away from their education, they can't focus in class, they don't want to go to school, and it's because of those characteristics that are bolded in the top, then it'll probably be founded as a hood. But if it's not with those things, it's conflict. And so the title of this slide is Hib Conflict versus Hib Law. And I changed the title from when we were supposed to present this yesterday because what I realized in explaining to parents, they kept saying, but my child is being bullied. Can't you see that? And it was difficult saying, no, we can't see it because the behaviors weren't right. However, they didn't meet the standard of the law as far as there being a characteristic that was perceived, or the kid might say, no, I go to class and learn, I'm fine. He's just getting on my nerves. So the, the behaviors aren't good, but it doesn't rise to that. So a normal conflict is mutually competitive. They're arguing with each other. They're calling names. And sometimes they call each other names that aren't nice, that may seem to fit <laughs> the categories, but it's really about the name calling, not about the category. They're having disagreements. And we have to learn to deal with those things in life and grow up, as we grow up. But the law, HIB, is usually one-sided. So a group of people or a person is bothering another group of people or person, and there really is no retaliation. The intent is to harm, whether physically or emotionally. It's not just to get back at or have some. The intent is to harm based upon those characteristics. And so if there is a situation, there was always going to be consequences and remedial measures, whether it's HIB law or HIB conflict, because our job as a school district is to make sure that our students are whole, whether they're the alleged victim or the alleged perpetrator. It's to make sure that everyone understands how we should treat each other and how we should be treated. And so the law has done a very good job of doing that for most school districts, and definitely here in Lawrence where our administrators make sure that we are proactive in letting our students know the effects of negative behavior, not only on someone else, but on themselves. Because if you don't feel good about yourself, you tend to bother someone else. And those students that feel good about themselves, that are happy with themselves, don't tend to bother anyone else. So we have to figure out, why is someone bothering another someone? And it's usually because there's something within them that we can help to make them whole. So the law has done that, but when you, if you, and hopefully we have less and less, have an instance where you feel your child is being harassed or is in a situation of HIV, we do a very good job in the district. If we find that your allegation is unfounded, that does not mean that we are not doing something. And that's the other thing. Many times parents want to be able to see that something being done. And just as with your child, it's confidential. The consequences for a child are confidential. We wouldn't talk about what happens to your child to someone else, and we're not going to talk about what happens to someone else's child to you. However, please know that we take all of the allegations serious and that we take making sure that our children are whole serious. And that means the alleged victim or the alleged offender. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. You were right along. Uh, guidance and mental health. Uh, we did not meet. Okay. And on to the liaison reports, New Jersey School Board Association. All right, I'll jump right in on that one. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, county leadership meeting occurred March 28th. We had 56 people attending throughout the entire state of New Jersey. Legal updates were given by Jonathan Pushman. And um, another topic that was discussed, I don't know if you've seen it in the paper, that a board member was um, legally being attacked by other board members and we're trying to, again, ethics charges and making sure people understand what they can and can't say and do in public. So even we have to have retraining to make sure we are staying on in line. Um, New Jersey School Board's uh, virtual Congress congressional hall visits occurred March 30th, 10 a.m. to 3.30 afternoon. We got a half hour break for lunch. Whew. It was a long one, but it was really great. Um, the educational priorities, these were some of the topics that were discussed. Educational priorities, COVID-19 recovery, individuals with disabilities, and Education Act, IDEA, request for full funding. Um, preparing, developing, and retaining effective educators, that's on our radar. Public school funding resources, closing the homework gap with internet connectivity, bus driver shortages, and later start time for high school students. These are all laws that are pending, and each of the, um, bon well, Bonnie Watson Coleman was our representative for our area, and each of the people got to speak how they're dealing with the topics that I just listed up above. And our um, congressional representative said she reported education is a high priority for her. She also spoke to the issues about retaining excellent teaching and recommendations, teachers rather, excuse me, and recommendations to provide accommodations for teachers that would encourage them to go to challenging districts. Other topics of importance were emotional, academic counseling, career pathways, budget restraints, food insecurities, infrastructures. Um, she encouraged all of us to reach out. She was very open and Again, this was, was kind of interesting because it was a technology glitch with quite a few of them, and they're in Washington, D.C., and we're throughout the entire state, and they couldn't get on. You'd see their lips moving, they were unmuted, so they got to experience what we all have been experiencing, so it was kind of like, a, yeah, this is what we've been dealing with. Um, then March 30th, we, uh, Ross spoke to that about the strategic planning and community conversation. And I found some really interesting feedback, the discussion with students and parents feeling that they want to belong and that they matter. And that to me was like the crooks of, of what maybe we need to hear more of. And, and I was really excited that parents felt comfortable enough to share that. The other topic was how to get information out to families. Not all families are technology, technologically savvy and how can we reach them? What do we need to do? And language barriers. So many thanks to all the parents that did attend and thanks for giving up their time. It's something that's so important for our district to hear. Please know we value all parents and we do encourage your input. So don't feel that we, we don't want you there. You are welcome and you are important to us. Um, I attended Celebrating our educational and community leaders breakfast at the First Baptist Church in Eggert Crossing this past Sunday, 9 to 12. What a fantastic experience. They honored the um, recipients this year were Harold Brown. You may recognize Joyce Scott's name. She mm -hmm. was being honored. Darlene Thomas, Tia Brown, who's one of our own. Chantel Wooten and our own Patricia Hendricks Farmer. <laughs> a good time was had by all, and it really was quite joyful to learn about the honorees and the history of our town and the families that helped make Lawrence what it is today. So again, congratulations to all the recipients. And then I attended Project Graduation Meeting um, April 4th. And there is a need for an entertainment and food chair for this year's program. Next year, two positions are open, and it is the chair for the entire um, group and the treasurer. If we don't get people, this may be the last year for project graduation. So if you're available, please step up, take the charge. It's a fantastic night. Casino night was a success. 115 people attended. 
Many thanks to Kim Larifield and Amy Davis for co-chairing a success, oh boy, come on Lips, you can do it, successful <laughs> event. This year we're gonna have the Senior Showcase, May 6th, here at the high school, 7 p.m. Lawn signs will be sponsored by LADA. Senior parents have the option to pick up their sign at school or have it delivered to your house. So you'll have to let them know which way you would prefer it. All senior signs are free. The public can purchase one for $20. And they're going to do, um, oh golly, what's the name of the restaurant in town? The pizza and cookie dough. Oh, I'm drawing a blank on the, town, the name of, Fedoras, that's what it is, thank you. Project graduation locked in event will be held right now. It's way we've, we've got a green light to do the lock in event in the building. Stay tuned because we hope that COVID stays away. So, and that will be right after graduation. Um, LTEF, don't forget about Snag a Bag, April 22nd, Ryder University. There still are tickets available. Lots of amazing bags and opportunities for you to snag one. <laughs> It'll be an awesome night for fun with, fun, fun with friends, and you'll be helping to provide outstanding opportunities for many of the children, too. Um, before I came, I did a resolution subcommittee meeting, and there, were no, there was one resolution that was submitted, and it was to um, end EDTAP. And because we're already doing that, um, they've retracted the resolution. So the delegates assembly will just be voting on um, oh, bylaws and, and those kind of things. And that will be happening May 14th at Mercer County Community College in person. And I will stop talking. Thank you so much for all of that. You bet. Thank you. Um, next is Lawrence Township, Lawrence Town Council. Yes, um, no report tonight because the council meeting I think is in about a week. Um, Lawrence Township Growth and Redevelopment, that is me. Um, uh, we have not met, but I did attend uh, one of two ribbon cutting ceremonies um, and visited the second store. Um, the first one was the Crave Nature's Eatery on Brunswick Avenue, which is a vegan and fresh, delicious cuisine in a very stylish atmosphere. I highly recommend it. I did a tasting, delicious. And the second one was the opening of Results Boxing and Fitness, which is in the lower level at Quaker Ridge Mall. I did not try that one out, but it looked pretty good. <laughs> so I highly recommend both of those. And that is growth and redevelopment. Uh, uh, next. Just one question, Madam mm -hmm. President. W yes. What's the name of the vegan restaurant? I think it I is may called, have to stop by there. Yeah, it's Craves. Nature's Eatery. It's on Brunswick Avenue next to, in the shopping center with the, um, the dance studio. Okay, thank you. And then we have a uh, direct link. We did not meet. Okay. Uh, partnership, uh, that's me. Um, partnership did not meet, but I did have a chance uh, this past Monday, um, had the opportunity to visit the Every Child Value program, and I read to the students. Um, literacy is at the forefront of this program, and I encourage anyone who's interested to either volunteer to read to students or reach out to me directly, and, and I would um, connect you to, to the program if you want to be a, um, a reader for the kids. I read two books to them, and by the third book, the students were literally taking the book out of my hand, and they wanted to read for themselves. Not sure if I was putting them to sleep, or they were just <laughs> eager to read and show me their skills. Either way, they, they're great kids, and it was an honor to, um, to spend some time with them. So I just wanted to note that. Um, Mercer County Votech, I don't believe we have a representative. And now we're at special education. Uh, we did not meet, however, there is a special presentation tomorrow night, April 7th, um, on basic rights in special education, uh, featuring Nina Peckman, who is a staff attorney for the Advocates for Children of New Jersey. Um, this will be held at, here at the high school. Um, it will be presented both in English and Spanish. The English session is at 6.30, and the Spanish session begins at 7.30. Um, if you'd like to register for this event, please go to ltps.org slash CPAG. 
Is that being held in the tech center or here in yeah. the auditorium? I'm not sure. I oh. think you'll get details once it's, you it's register. In the it's, in the, it's in person Thank auditorium? You. Okay. Yes. Thank you. In person auditorium for anyone who wants to register. Okay. Uh, review of communications? There was none. There is none? Okay. With that, we are now at the first opportunity for public input. Um, if you could please come to the mic, state your name, your address, and please keep it to three minutes. You have three minutes once you get here. Yeah. Once you get to the mic. That's okay. It's okay. Take your time. That's cute. Um, my name is Maria Lanao. And I'm here on behalf of the custodial workers of the Lawrence Township Public Schools School District. I'm uh, here on behalf of the union, 32BJ. We're here, thank you so much for letting us speak here today. The truth is that the best predictor of future behavior is, by, is past behavior. And HSGC past behavior is Deplorable. In Morristown, 27 workers lost their job when the word awarded the contract to the cheapest bidder, HSGC. They were the cheapest because they had no intention of keeping the workers' benefits. There were two pregnant women who lost their health insurance and are now dealing with their medical bills. They also lost a worker. Mr. Felix Mendoza, who died in September of last year, leaving about $80,000 in medical bills because he lost his health insurance when Morristown chose HSGC. The union and the, four, and the workers have fought hard. They never gave up in these nine months. We attended school board meetings and explained the impact of losing their jobs, and now, the National Labor Relations Board is pursuing charges against HSGC for their actions in Morristown and seeking a remedy of over $700,000. Last week, the school district in Morristown announced that they are going to rebid the contract after only one year. Board, we urge you to ensure that the lowest bidder is enough to continue paying fair wages and to maintain health care. If the bid is so low that the company will break the law to avoid the union, you should not give them this contract. If the company is going to cut wages and benefits, you should not give them this contract. We know the district wants to prepare its students to be good citizens and do the right thing. We're asking you to do the right thing by the workers. The district can avoid the problems in Morristown by rebuilding the work and requiring all companies to pay good wages and benefits for all their custodial workers. If the school board does change contractors today, we ask you to ensure that whoever you pick, which we already heard is HSBC, um, treats the workers fairly, <coughs> offers them jobs, doesn't cut their wages, and most importantly, pays for their health insurance. We're open to working for all companies, but we want the rights of the workers respected, and we need to be, because they need to be able to take care of their families. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we don't have a board discussion or work session. Yeah, we oh, we have another no, speaker. No speaker. Okay. Hi, I'm Kristen Little, um, One Tutor Lane in Lawrence. Um, I saw the review and the presentation on HIV. Um, I just went through the investigative process myself with one of my children um, at the elementary level. I was raised in Mercer County. I was a Ewing resident, went to the school Jersey. Sorry, traitor. Um, but when I relocated back up to Central Jersey, 
nobody call it South Jersey, please. Um, my insistence, even though I went through the school Ewing district, my insistence was to come back to Lawrence instead. It had always been the more premier district for um, education. It was, you know, more proficient for everybody. And so I wanted my children to go through this district rather than the one I had known. Um, I can't say that, that I feel at this point, we've been here about four or five years now, I can't say that I feel that I made the right decision. Um, my child is only eight years old and has been terrorized by another child of a different race at, um, at his school since kindergarten. He's in second grade now. Okay. He's been terrorized since kindergarten. And it's, gotten, it's been reported every time. Okay. It's gotten progressively worse. I, just, I have to stop you for a moment mm -hmm. because um, you're going into something confidential. I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to okay. like mention anybody's names, the school, nothing like that. Okay. Um, it's just, just that it's been reported. And I know that we're under this pilot program and everything and everything sounds great. And it kind of feels like his circumstances are being swept under the rug. Parent concerns are not being addressed properly or at all. Um, simply reporting it and asking for something to happen has escalated things on a more personal and inappropriate level. Okay. And but I'm going to kind of have to ask you, mm -hmm. um, because we can't respond to anything that you're no, saying. No, no problem. You know, so in the proper channel would be in a closed session, you know, for you to have your opportunity mm -hmm. to discuss the matter you know, fairly. It, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way then. Okay. Um, I know that we are a district of character and that there's a zero tolerance policy. And I just ask that since our focus is on diversity and equity, that we definitely double our effort, triple, quadruple our efforts to make sure that all students are really are being heard and treated equitably as well as their families because it's not being seen. And I mean, I, I know I've seen some strides throughout the district and I'm not gonna say the district is horrible as a whole or anything mm -hmm. like that, but we really do need to do better. And I, a lot of focus seems has been more on the older grades. Let's really concentrate extra hard at the younger grades because mm -hmm. I don't want us to ruin the educational process from the moment they walk through the doors to where it just ruins them going forward. So I just ask that you all take a closer look at what's going on. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank um, you. And I, I will follow up with you tomorrow. Any other? No. Okay. Board discussion, work session. We don't have anything. Okay. So we will go for the next opportunity for public input. Okay. Next um, board discussion or action items. Don't believe we have any. Nope. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to personnel committee report and okay. personnel action items. Personnel did meet March 30th, 8.15 to 9.35 a.m. In attendance, Ross Kaysen, Sean Fry, Patricia Farmer, Hendrickson, Kevin Van Heist, Michelle Bose, and myself. Uh, personnel updates and discussion topics were the open positions for maintenance. Uh, I'm still reviewing candidates for that open position. Um, LTPS administration, we reviewed responsibilities of all administrative positions. Next year's posting for LDTC, special education, English, and business education positions. Staff meetings, they are ongoing. Staffing and budget with the state funding information added to our budget. Things are looking good in the district. We'll continue to finalize staffing projections for 22-23 school year. LAPTA update. We are looking good, and you'll find that on our uh, new business, or actually is it on this one? I have to look which one it is, but it's on our agenda tonight. Congratulations, well done. Job fair, our district has attended interviews, uh, interviewing events with CJ Pride and Ryder University. Um, great news about EdTap, which you heard me talk about with one of the resolutions that was tabled. Um, the pending litiga litigation proposals to eliminate this, which will reduce the burden it's placed on student teachers and out-of-state cert certificate holders transferring to New Jersey. On tonight's personnel agenda, you will find two retirements, 
Camille Milan, I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right. Is it Malin or Milan? Malin. Malin, thank you. With 19 years experience, Yvette Panastowicz, 16 years. Oh. Both of these ladies are gonna stay in their positions until, until the end of the school year. So we're not saying goodbye to them quite yet. Hold on with that. But I will thank them for their dedication, their um, time in making our district a better place for our students to learn. And I really want them to take pause and enjoy the moments of the ending of a school year and then start thinking about their awesome futures that are ahead of both of them. You'll also see on the agenda approval of resignations, leave of absence, a leave replacement, approvals of substitutes, substitute assistants, appointments of EDPs, staff members, destination and eagle positions and substitutes for that and adjust me, adjustment of salary due to credits earned. And with that, I'd like to me, move P1 through P16. Second. With a motion and a second. Bonus suppose if we call roll. Thanks, how did you know I was looking for that one? <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Bose. Yes. Ms. Evans. Yes. Ms. Skroger. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Santos. Yes. <clears throat> I'm going to move over to the mic a little closer. Ms. Farmer. Yes. The motion carried. Thank you. And with that, we will go to CIPD report and inst instructional. Uh, yes, CIP CIAPD met on March 29th. Uh, Amanda Santos, Rob Pluta, myself, Michelle King, Andrew uh, Zuckerman, Dr. Ross Kaysen, um, and we had a presentation by uh, Kristen Burke, uh, the math supervisor for K through six. Um, Go Math, which has been the uh, math program that has been in our schools for the past 10 year years, is no longer going to be available. Uh, so Kristen and um, our team has, have been evaluating five programs to see which math program uh, we would be interested in having in our district. Uh, two programs were piloted this year um, with lots of feedback from students and teachers. Um, we're in the process of a decision and once a new program is selected um, and it will be adopted for our elementary grades, plans are being established to provide multiple opportunities for training and preparation for all elementary school teachers. Um, we also discussed the FY21 school performance report. The state of New Jersey compiles and publishes comprehensive data annually for each school district. Administration has received the data and has had the opportunity to review for errors. Uh, the report will be made public at, future, at a future date and will be posted on the district website. Um, and on the agenda, you'll see there is some uh, AP training uh, for about three or four new AP teachers. Um, this will be uh, training so that we have more uh, teachers that can teach AP classes. Um, we also reviewed a couple of policies that are on the agenda, class size, media center, student assessment, dress and grooming, public com complaints and grievances, and a regulation on public complaints and grievances. Um, the other thing, uh, the Lawrence High School stage lights uh, is, are being, there are, sorry, there's lights that are being donated to the Lawrence High School Theater um, from the McCarter Theater. How awesome is that? So that's great. And with that, I would like to move IS1 through IS5. Five. Second. Okay, with the motion and a second. Ms. Bowes. Yes. Ms. Evans. Yes. Mrs. Grover. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Santos. Yes. Ms. Farmer. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next is finance committee report. But Pepper has nothing to report because Tom did it all. Nothing to report. <laughs> well, <laughs> nothing to report. Tom told you everything. <laughs> I do. I, have a, I actually have a question. Um, I just would like to um, just hear what Tom if he has any um, kind of response to um, what um, Maria Thank brought you. up. I, was, I wrote it down, but I forgot it. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, Just in regards to some of the concerns that was voiced over HGSC campus services, and if 
you have any comment yeah. on it. Yeah, I, and, and um, I wasn't able, I didn't hear your last name clearly. Okay, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. I was going to try and catch up with you. Yeah, yeah, and I did, and so thank you for that. Um, the district is in an interesting spot. Um, so, and public procurement is meant to open up a level playing field such that um, vendors, contractors have a right to bid on a contract. Um, and it's seen as essentially, if you look at rights as a property right, that they have that ability. In the existing um, situation as described um, so eloquently, that yes indeed there is a, a National Labor Relations Board complaint against the given contractor who is the lowest bidder. Um, that's not been founded yet, it's still being researched. Um, I don't, not against, not against us, yeah. So not against us. Um, and so we don't have anything that precludes us. Um, there's another, another extension um, that goes to the concept of, of fairness also, um, which is that the notion of even if the contractor was found to be guilty of something, that does that mean that forevermore there's no redemption for them? Um, in any business, wherever it is, whether it's even our business where we've had to have corrective action plans, does that mean that we can never redeem ourselves to have a better practice, um, no matter what the case may be? And so asking us to reject a contract that's not yet been adjudicated to find them guilty before they're even been guilty is a difficult thing and it's a difficult place. Now that's just the moral argument of it. Um, the, the legal argument of it is that we don't have any grounds not to accept the bid. So, and I understand, and this goes back a little bit to the, the Hib piece that um, Mr. Thompson had discussed. We have, there can be things that we don't agree with, but it does not make it such that it's not legal. Um, we have a bid, uh, our bids were reviewed. It was Mr. Patinati's firm that reviewed this particular bid. And we looked at the bid from the perspective of, is this the lowest responsible responsive bidder who meets the bid specifications? And do we have grounds to reject the bid? And the answer to that was legally no. We have no grounds to reject the bid. Um, so that we could be clear about that, we answered the SEIU with another letter. And we asked the SEIU to give us grounds that they believed was a rejection for the bids. They did not give us legal grounds. They gave us moral grounds. Um, they gave us what they felt were ethical grounds, um, but they didn't give us anything that stands the legal test. Um, and it doesn't mean that the argument wasn't um, a good argument. It just means that it didn't meet our level, our thresholds of what that would be. Um, and so um, we have a situation whereby we have one group of people who have an interest in making sure that the constituents and our fellow human beings are treated well. Um, at the same time, one of the interesting things here is that the bidder who is the lowest bidder actually is 17% higher in their bid than the current contract. They are 70, their bid is $79,000 more than the current contract we pay today. That's 17% more. And I did this work because I took the, the, the letters that were sent to you, Ms. Farmer, and to um, Dr. Kaysen, and I really did the analysis of it, and I would be happy to put it on the board if you could unplug fast and I would put it up there for you. The, to show you that in the current year, our contract with All Clean, who, is, um, who has, I believe, 12 persons who are members of the SEIU, um, the current contract we pay is $429,000. The contract that we would enter into, if you vote yes on these, is not $429,000, but $500,163. 
$79,000 more, or a 17% raise. Um, now, I don't know what that's going to translate into as it moves to the human beings who work um, for that, uh, Tom, that company. Yes? How long is the contract for if we prove this to It's me? a two-year contract. And there's no protection for us? If of we... course there's protection for us. Okay. Yeah, we have things called performance bonds that um, uh, the contractor has to provide us that say if they default on the contract that they are going to, um, uh, their, their insurance company will take over the contract. What's happening, as far as I know, uh, in Morristown, and of course I checked references, that there's been no default in contract. Um, and uh, so... This is very much as we have here when things are brought to us, legal matters that they can't discuss openly and they won't discuss openly. Um, and so we're in a position where we have to work from the information we know. So we've cycled around just to summarize from our own uh, moral considerations. When something goes wrong, do we fix it or do we, we don't prejudge it and we don't say you can never work with us again. Um, and the other thing is, once we go past that moral argument and ethical argument, um, and I appreciate your argument in terms of the predictor is what someone's done in the past, except for we're a school district. And we believe that people do evolve past those things, and we believe that we won't essentially look at a company and profile it. Um, that's not who we are. And, and due process is something that we, we look for. And so, if, Tom... I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. so this would be, would this be a case where we could, we would know what's happening? I mean, we would get, we would have, have opportunity say. to, uh, what? Do we have any say or input on what they're, what they're doing? Uh, well, it's, it's when you contract out with someone, you contract out for them to do a job for you. <laughs> if, if you tell them how to do the job on their day to days, then they're your employee and no longer a contractor. Mm. Um, and then we get into the Uber issue. Um, but uh, so we have contracted out. Um, but there will come a time, I see in, in the not too distant future, where we will not contract out. That we will probably be bringing all of these back into our own fold. Mm -hmm. um, because we're getting to a point now where if the costs keep coming in the way they are, there is no reason to contract out. That's, that's, that was my next question. Um, because you. what we've seen is, so for example, even though uh, HC. HCSG is up by $71,000 on a $429,000 contract. The, the next bidder was $110,000 higher. The one after that was $125,000 higher. And then two of our other previous were $145,000 and $158,000 higher. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, we wouldn't award the bids at all. We would just start it in-house again. Um, and so, and we have evidence of that. So on the agenda tonight is the rejection of the lawn service bid. Um, the reason we rejected that was because it came in at $108,000. Uh, the existing bid was somewhere around $60,000. The contractors essentially, because of the market, have mm -hmm. priced themselves out of a job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just do that in-house. Okay. So those are the things that we're, we're wrestling with. I mean, our own... Uh, our own unions are looking at 3% increases. Um, and this that we're, we're making an award for is at a 17% increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, are there any more questions from the board? Well, Madam President, I'm deeply concerned about uh, item number 10. Uh, we have uh, members of the union have come here to complain that this particular uh, private contractor has a bad history. Um, based upon the information that I have now, um, I can't vote for number 10. Um, I think that our workers who clean our schools and do all of the um, frontline work, uh, they have not benefited from this economy. And uh, when someone says that they potentially could lose their health benefits, I think it's concerning. Um, so for this particular item, I would like for it to be either pulled or set aside um, um, so that if I do cast my vote, I, don't, 
I can indicate that I'm not going to vote for it because I don't have sufficient information right now that these workers will not be hurt or harmed by switching out one uh, company for the other. And I think we have to be um, considerate um, that these are um, uh, workers that come in to clean our schools and um, we rely upon them. Okay. I heard you, Mr. Johnson. Um, is there anyone else? Mm -hmm. And I'd like to make a motion to uh, pull out number 10 for further consideration from tonight's agenda. Would you like to do it the way we typically do it, is SBM 1 through 15 except 10? Oh, yes. sure, say that okay. too, because that leaves me nothing <laughs> <Right>. to say. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait, you can't, please, no comments from the audience. Okay, if we can have the motion, please. All right, I'm, I would like to move SBM 1 through 15 except number 10. Okay. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second, if we could call the roll. Ms. Bowes? Yes. Ms. Evans? Yes. Ms. Scroger? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Uh, then move to Ms. Santos? Yes. <laughs> and Ms. Farmer? Yes. Okay. Okay. So the motion has been accepted. All right. Now you're left with SBM 10. And okay. um, I'd like to move that we table SBM 10 for further consideration. Second. Um, can I just ask one question? <laughs> Is there a time constraint on this contract? Sorry? A uh, time constraint on the decision for this contract, meaning um, if, how much time do we have? The to vendor has to hold prices, I believe we have in the, in the uh, spec for 60 days. Okay. And if you table a motion, you have to table it to a definite date and time in the future. Mm -hmm at which mm -hmm. time it must be determined. Okay. When is our next board meeting? <laughs> that would be May 4th. May there we 4th. go. May the 4th be with you. Okay. That's right. <laughs> so Mr. Aldridge, May 4th would be sufficient enough time for all board members to review and address any questions that they may have with regards to SB10, SBM10, is that correct? Uh, I think that what, is, I don't know that it would be sufficient time for them because I don't know what their questions would be. Um, and I think that, um, but I, so I'll leave it at that because um, I'm not sure which direction they would go in. Um, but should we decide that we are going to go out to bid again, um, then we would probably be awarding in June, at which point the crossover time will be so close um, mm. that we need to be prepared, not saying that we can't, we just need to be prepared that um, it will be a difficult, difficult startup. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible. It's okay. not impossible. I wouldn't dissuade anyone from taking their okay. time. Does this, do you think this um, subject would mandate a special meeting for uh, we, the time? We that could you, have a special needed? meeting, or uh, the board could also state that. Um, uh, we could look at it from, I mean, we did discuss this in the, the finance meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we had this discussion and we did have this discussion at a great deal of length. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, um, we could hold another meeting um, to answer questions for sure. Um, you could hold a special board meeting of the Committee of the Whole. You could, um, okay. so this, um, the specification that went out is exactly the same specification we've used for 15 years, mm -hmm. and no more. Uh, it, it has not changed at all. Okay. So if we were to vote on this May 4th, it would be okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I, yeah. I think it's reasonable to expect for any board member who has any questions or needs additional information that they can have it prior to. Okay. I just want to make sure that anyone on the board who has any questions or needs additional information has sufficient enough time sure. and that we can vote at the next available mm -hmm. yes. date so that we don't jeopardize our 
time frame for going forward with our contract. Sure. Okay, thank you. With that, we're voting on SBM 10. To table it to May 4th, the motion was made by uh, Ms. Evans. Is there a second? Second. Okay. With a motion and a second, if we could call the roll. Certainly. Ms. Bose? Yes. Ms. Evans? Yes. Ms. Groger? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Uh, Ms. Santos? Yes. I'm sorry, I have to skip too many names today. <laughs> Ms. Farmer? Yes. Got it. Okay. Motion Thank carried. you, Mr. Eldridge. Yep. Okay. With that, we are now moving to the next opportunity for public input. Thank you. If you could just state your name and My your name address. Mark, Mark Elliott, 43 Laurelwood Drive. Uh, I just wanted to applaud the thoughtful conversation that just occurred here about workers' rights and humanistic issues. I think it's important that, uh, that it's not all just about it. I, I applaud also the, the business ideas when it comes to dollars and cents and the bidding, all that kind of thing that goes on. Just the thoughtful conversation. Um, it's not the same how two companies get to that number That's at right. the end. And it's about uh, the quality of the company it makes a big difference to me as a parent and, um, and a resident of, of this town. And, uh, and I, I really do appreciate the conversation you guys just had right there. It's important. Workers' rights are important. Quality of, of human lives, I mean, the, 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 human, the quality of a human life is important. And I know that it's about the law, and I know it's about the number, but um, I just, uh, I, I wish you luck in doing proper due diligence and finding out more about who these contractors are that are, that are bidding for your business. So thank you very much, and uh, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no more additional public input, we'll move to new business. Okay, and new business, you will see that we have substitute approvals, volunteers pass the trash clearances, and the LAPTA MOA. And with all of that, I'd like to move NB1 through NB10. Second. Uh, 10 is brand new. Yes. Um, I don't know, is it on your agendas too no. for this evening? No. I don't oh, think so. So 10 didn't get through? No, no, that's why it's, a, it's an add-on. Ah, oh, okay, so do I do one through nine and no, then no, you can, add? I'll just read in 10 for you. Thank you. It's, yeah, uh, read 10. Sorry. Number 10 is a motion to approve Colin D'Angelo as a volunteer baseball coach at Lawrence High School for the 21-22 school year. The young man came in very last minute with his clearances, <laughs> and after we just passed it, and we thought it would be a good idea to squeeze it in for tonight. There we go. So I wasn't blind. I had a 10 on my agenda. <laughs> you had a 10. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'd like to make a motion 1 through 10 then, NB. Second. With a motion and a second, if you could please call the roll, Mr. Eldridge. Ms. Bose. Yes. Ms. Evans. Yes. Ms. Kroger. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes, and especially in support of the baseball guy. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Santos. Yes. And Ms. Farmer. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And with that, we need a motion to adjourn. For adjournment. I make the motion. Second. With a motion and a second, if you could please call the roll. Ms. Bose. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Evans. Just don't worry about that. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> Ms. Evans. Yes. Ms. Groger. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Santos. Yes. Ms. Farmer. Yes. Motion With carried. that motion carried. Thank right. you. And have Thank a good you. night. Good night, all. Have a good night, everyone.